It's strange in the desert. <laughs> strange in the desert, the old faithful, the classic, the one and only. <laughs> you know, I, I have always had and have always given away most of my life two things. One was a Bible. I always seem to give away Bibles a lot. And the other was the strings in the desert. <laughs> you know, in this series of describing how and when or why God gave me these eight different devotionals that I read and share in devotional, Streams in the Desert is a classic of collections of devotionals that were about at the time of Mrs. Kalman, who was a missionary to China, and she had been overseas and gone there with her husband, and as he was dying, after a successful long stint of being a missionary, she began to accumulate these devotionals and write them down for herself and for him to encourage him during his time of suffering because he died a long and painful death and she watched him slowly pass away. And those early devotionals that she borrowed from and collected and accumulated some of them have been out of print and you can't even find. But the classic part of it was that all of them seemed to be geared towards the idea of suffering for Jesus, suffering with Jesus, and understanding that there was mercy and compassion for the, those that were called and chosen by God to walk the path that might bear the cross and the marks of the cross or the whole idea of dying to self you know, in their life. And so there's a certain style that of her selections that shows and brings out compassion and mercy for those who are suffering. And in all the volume of the devotionals that I use in this devotionals, some of them are designed for scripture, some of them are designed for just, for instance, like God calling, just God speaking, but Streams in the Desert is specifically for those who suffer, and it does bring comfort. And I don't use, there's other volumes, I only use volume one, but the blessing that I found upon it was that everyone that I've ever seen that chooses to read devotionals and let God speak has been blessed by them. And so any devotionals, if it so be that God chooses to use that in your life, then as I explain once a month why I chose these, God has definitely taken me from the years that I spent in VA hospitals at, you know, the point of suffering, lying in hospital beds for years, that Streams in the Desert was one of those that I found in the VA, as well as some of those little booklets, you know, that <laughs> some of them good, some of them bad, um, that helped me through those times of suffering where I did not understand what was going on. So in Streams, they shall mount up with wings as eagles from Isaiah 40, 31. There is a fable about the way the birds got their wings at the beginning. They were first made without wings. Then God made the wings and put them down before the wingless birds and said to them, come, take up these burdens and bear them. The birds had lovely plumage and sweet voices. They could sing and their feathers gleamed in the sunshine, but they could not soar in the air. They hesitated at first when bidden to take up the burdens that lay at their feet, but soon they obeyed, and taking up the wings in their beaks, laid them on their shoulders to carry them. For a little while the load seemed heavy and hard to bear, but presently as they went on carrying the burdens, holding, folding them over their hearts, the wings grew fast to their little bodies, and soon they discovered how to use them, and they were lifted by them up into the air. The weights became wings. It is a parable. We are the wingless birds, and our duties and tasks are the pinions God has made to lift us up and carry us heavenward. We look at our burdens and heavy loads and shrink from them. But as we lift them and bind them about our hearts, they become wings, and on them we rise and soar toward God. There is no burden which, if we lift it cheerfully and bear it with love in our hearts, will not become a blessing to us. God means our tasks to be our helpers. To refuse to bend our shoulders to receive a load is to incline and is to decline a new opportunity for growth. 
Blessed is any weight, however overwhelming, which God has been so good as to fasten with his own hand upon our shoulders. James was a little more blunt. <laughs> And I love James. I had a assistant pastor that was probably the most humble man and yet uniquely inspired man that I've ever met as far as being a number two in any ministry. His name was Romaine and some people liked his style of sharing and caring and some people didn't. His favorite book was the book of James. When we count it all joy, when we fall into diverse trials and tribulations. Because the reality of anything that is in your life is because God allowed it to come to your life. What you are supposed to do with your life, just like you're supposed to do with these circumstances or these trials, is to take it to God, is to give it to God, is to talk to Him about it. It isn't a matter of simply running out and figuring it out on your own. It isn't a matter of getting the best minds of around you that could give you all the wise counsel that there is in the world. And it isn't about rejecting or accepting, you know, some word that's been spoken to you from the prophets or from some other source that, in their good intentions, want you to hear. No. The reality is, is that God wants you to bring it to Him in prayer. And prayer meaning conversation. So, as you start your journey, you bring it to God in prayer first, and then He brings those that are called by Him and are chosen by Him to give you good counsel. If it so be that you've given it to God or some circumstance or situation or trial you're going through or even some disability and God gives someone a word for you, you'll know, because it'll sound like the voice of God that you've already spoken to and heard from. If it so be that God gives you a teaching or a encouragement from your church or from your pastor, it will sound like the Lord because you've already spoken and heard from God himself. These are the confirmations of God as he gives them to you to strengthen you and bolster you up. It's never meant to be in contradiction to what God is teaching you or God is directing you. It's meant to be in confirmation of what God is doing with you and showing and revealing to you. There is never a conflict of interest when it comes to God. God doesn't conflict himself with others that he's called. In reality, what he does is he conflicts your understanding so that you'll come to a place of literally trusting in him with all your heart, leaning not into your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledging him so he can direct your path. When he does, then every day becomes an exciting revelation of what he's doing in each day, not an exciting or depressing consternation or confrontation or even concern or worry about those things that you think are overwhelming to you at this moment. Because the reality is, God is bigger than you are. <laughs> Thank God. And he can and he does at any moment that he chooses, either bring salvation, explanation, confirmation, or any number of explanatory ways with which he will reveal to you who he is what he is and how he operates his bottom line is love for you there is nothing that he allows to come into your life that isn't directing you in some way back to him all of it it will always direct you to him so he can show you through yourselves experiences how he wants you to go according to his word according to his way and according to his timing You see, in reality, everything, in all ways, is always going to be about a personal relationship with God. It's not going to be about a general idea that you have to speculate whether or not you can have faith or have some mystical, marvelous, weird kind of experience. But the reality is, is that it's pretty common sense. 
What you hear is what you do, and what you do is what you heard. I mean, that's pretty simple. Jesus didn't make faith all that complicated. He said if you had it the size of a mustard seed, you could say to a mountain and be gone. It's not a question of how much faith you've got, but about what your relationship and knowledge of God really is. If he loves you, guess what? If you have a relationship with him, then I think he wants to talk to you. Don't you want to hear from him? <laughs> Most of what people say, if you ask them very long and a few questions, of why they don't hear from God isn't from God's part, but it's from ours. Because sometimes people really don't want to hear what God has to say. Because they are afraid of Him. Are you?